the um, what's it called smooth terrain feature. I know all these things by the graphics. I don't I don't mouse over them. Look at the names. So I'm uh, I'm rambling up too much here. Sorry. So again, you can change the shapes and uh, shapes of the cursor and whatnot, and the speed and the size and the amplitude. So that is the uh, height feature here. We're going to take a look at the cliff terrain feature next. This is something that you will see used most of the time to adjust the uh, elevation and maps. And we'll make that way down. Okay, so we've selected the cliff feature. This is raise cliff, lower cliff, same level, add ramp, and remove ramp. Okay, so we're going to take raise cliff, and the submenu here is organic and man-made. This is an organic cliff and this is a man-made cliff. You can tell they are very unique. And when you try to push one onto the other, you see it destroys the, uh, nat um, the natural one. And I inadvertently showed you something before I wanted to. Okay, so I'm going to select organic cliffs. <clears throat> We've got uh, size 3. And we're spraying some down here. So this is now one level higher than this terrain here. And to raise it even higher, you can click it again, and there you go. So now you have terrain that is, um, I call this level 2. So 2, 1, 0, and then to get down, you have the lower cliff feature. And we go down to, I call this negative 1, even though it's clearly like 3 layers down, but whatever, I'm not going to go... 210 negative 3. That's just silly talk. So, and you see, I've, I've lowered the ground level to this kind of basement level, so to speak, and uh, you can also lower the terrain. Do it like that. And then click it again to do it like that. So, you can play around with that if you want. The same level cliff will take the cursor, whatever layer uh, terrain the cursor is currently on, if you click and hold, you will drag and uh, cr you'll spread that level terrain wherever uh, you, wherever you drag the mouse to. And if you add, um, if you have a different cliff type selected, so I had organic cliff selected, you can see that I uh, undo that. <clears throat> so I had organic cliff selected. If I select man-made cliffs and try to put it here, you can see that it pushes away the natural cliff. So keep that in mind when you are when you're cliffing, cliffing it up. Okay, there. So add ramp, pretty self-explanatory. Add a ramp. Ta-da! All I did was left-click on the uh, edge of the edge of the thing there. And you can add different types of ramps. You can spread around the ground a little bit. And if you want to add a really big ramp, you know, of course, you'd need to make a big old honking base here. And add a ramp. God, I'd hate to have to defend that. Okay, so that is a ramp. And then remove ramp is... Oh, my God. Okay. So, next up, foliage. This applies uh, random foliage throughout the map as long as there is level terrain for it to be on. Well, not level terrain, but uh, appropriate painted terrain. So if you use, let's say, a rock here. So we'll put this rock down. Obviously, you're not going to have plants growing on rocks. You could have them growing up through the rocks, but I, 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 no. This is StarCraft. This is real life. So now we're going to adjust the density and the size. So the density is basically, you know, how much vegetation you're going to put into the grid um, per square. And the size is the size of the vegetation that goes into it. And so we've generated zero foliage atoms. Because this particular map, I do not believe you can actually put foliage on because of the, uh, the terrain. It's, a, it's an underground map, so to speak underground terrain so um, anyways that uh, that is how you would normally generate the foliage you would just click generate and it would appear randomly all over on uh, the map and so water water is something that I have lots of fun with okay so you've got two buttons in the water menu add water and remove water you saw a minute ago that I had to click this again even though uh, it was already selected 
I don't know why that is, but click it again, and you've got the water types here. I generally stick with uh, stick with the ones that actually have the decals. I'm not quite sure what these are here for. I don't know. Um, anyways, so I'm going to stick with, let's say, this water. And spread it around. Oh, to hide, hide and show the water, press the W key. And you can see where it has the yellow outline. It shows you where the water is, but uh, yeah. Okay, so this is water. And you'll see that it is slightly raised above the ground here. That's not a good thing. Water generally doesn't do that. So, with the water here selected, and this is something important, in order to edit the water, you need to make sure that you have the water selected in the menu. So I've got it selected, edit water, and this is the edit water submenu. So, first thing I need to do is I need to lower the water down. So I'm going to move it down just a little bit. You don't want to go crazy with this thing, it's super finicky. So I think the default is level 9 for the water, and probably you could bump it down to like 7, 7.25, something like that. And here you can adjust the water, and you can uh, it'll update the water automatically when you adjust it. So we're going to leave that alone for now. The alpha that kind of kicks up the lighting of it just a little bit. These are pretty much just different graphical effects that you can um, uh, change the water, how it looks, etc. So uh, I prefer the I prefer the caustics uh, fall off here. You can make it look like the lights shining through the water a lot. And this will adjust how deep the or how well you can see in the water. How deep you can see, basically. You can kick this up really high if you want to see just the top layer of the water, make it murky, or you can make it real low to see what it looks like all the way down below. And you can uh, you can adjust some of these other features here. Really, what I would suggest is open up this uh, this water editor, mess around with these bars, and like I said, it updates the water in real time, so you can see what looks best for your water, and you know just kind of make adjustments as necessary. And a couple more things here. At the bottom, you've got the uh, bottom. You've got receive shadows. Uh, you've got UV rotate, flow direction. This you know just changes the way the water is flowing, and you can change the flow rate. So if you actually want to have it look like a river, you can uh, adjust this here. So I will kick this way up, so you can see what is going on when I click OK. I've got it flowing down that way, and so here is the water. You can see that I uh, added the sun rays kind of down in the in the bottom of it. I made it so that way you can see all the way down. And yeah, that's uh, that's how you edit the water. So you can add different types of water to a map. You can see that this is here, and you will notice that this water is separate on a separate level and is not receiving the same uh, filters as this water. So you would select, uh, make sure this water is selected, go to edit water, and you can change it too. So I'm actually going to make this super red. All right, so here is the water now. So if you do add more than one type of water, just remember you need to go in and change each, um, change you know, the properties for each, each type of water individually. And lastly, you've got remove water. And surprise, I'm going to leave that up because it looks cool. Haha, <laughs> chop. Okay, so lastly, you've got terrain object. This is not something you'll be using until a little bit later. What you do is, um, it has to do with the doodads, basically. You can add additional types of doodads to the map. A lot of these are present in the campaign. And since I've selected the default values for loading this map, these are not available. However, like I said, we will go over this later on in the tutorial. So, um, anyways, like I said, this just kind of covered the absolute basics for getting around in the um, the terraforming side of uh, of the StarCraft II map editor. One more thing I do want to cover here. I'm going to close this. I know some of you have probably been thinking, "Hey, I want to make a space map. How do I do that and get the cool space background?" So, we'll select uh, Braxis Alpha. I'll pick Metal. Okay, so you want to make sure you pick a space texture set that says Space on it, first of all. 
And the way you get access down to the space level beneath it is you select the cliff editing feature, lower cliff, I'll kick this up for uh, that, and then lower it down. And what happens when you lower it down to the lower level, it, um, it shows what's in space. So, yeah. And then if you wanted to, for like a little asteroid, you could raise the terrain level, make it man-made, and... Well, that didn't work. But uh, that's because it's the, the Braxis uh, default terrain. But anyways, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how this works. I hope you guys have enjoyed the tutorial, and I will get to work on more. Next up, we're going to go over doodads, and we've got unit placement, mineral placement, uh, stuff like that. So I will try to get that, uh, that up for you guys as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching.